got an itch. Scratch it. Do you scratch it? What? Do you scratch an itch? I mean, or sometimes, or do you? Depends like, on what the itch is. <laughs> ah, let's talk about it. Welcome, everybody. This is <laughs> Real Talk with Casey and JoJo. This is Casey. What's up, Casey? <laughs> What's up, JoJo? Why are you doing it that way? <laughs> Do you have an itch? <laughs> this is season two. Ooh, and that's, that's we crazy. are talking about relationships in this season. We're starting off with something we know nothing about, but a whole lot about. Right. Right. The itch. So, you know, when we get an itch, what is it? Where does it come from? Do you scratch it? What causes that internal itch? That same itch that happens to us physically happens to us emotionally, happens to us mentally in so many ways. And it's our intuition trying to tell us something. And the itch is just one way of interpreting it. So we're going to talk about what this itch is. Um, what are some things that it's going to encompass? Like newness in a relationship? I mean, I mean, so many love songs. Love songs are, are primarily based on the itch, right? Like the feel-good ones, not the sad ones, but the feel-good R&B love songs. It really, all love songs are about the itch, right? Yeah. So like what? The passion, the starting something new. Impulsiveness. I, gotta, I got this like... Okay, what I like to call it is like the fool in the tarot deck, which is basically somebody who's so optimistic about this new cycle in their life that they don't care about anything in their world. They're just bringing their necessities and the rest is like taking a leap of faith. They don't know where they're going. They're about to go on a path on an adventure. Um, they're super excited about it and they don't care about what's to come, what obstacles are going to be in the way. Nothing. It's just, yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. Like when you meet it, when you meet a dude and you start you're telling your girlfriend about him and you list all the things, all the awesome things about him. And then, you know, the last thing you list is, yeah, he lives with his mom. Right. And he's 35. So I what mean, are you trying to say? I'm just trying to say that when, when you have the itch, you only focus on the positive. You only focus on the things that shine the brightest. And, you know, when we're, when we're early in a relationship, it's like, uh, I can't remember the comedian that said this, but it's like, I'm meeting your representative. Like, I'm not meeting you. I'm meeting you, but I'm not meeting the dark you. I'm only meeting the you, you want to share the with me at this moment years. in time. Right. And and, and I mean, and that's a, that's an amazing phase of relationship. I'm not trying to knock it. The itch is awesome. The itch only happens once, right? Like kind you kind of, you can kind of have like phases of the itch, but the itch, like the itch, when you first see that is that's, 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 you can't only get that one time. True. And then, but then there's also the other itch, like the seven year itch, right? Where they, <laughs> where it's a, hey, something's not working anymore. I have that <clears throat> itch to experience that newness again, to experience <clears throat> love and i think what it is is that we have this something's not in alignment right something's not working and we're trying to be in alignment so we follow this like internal itch that's kind of leading us towards this alignment we're just not really fully prepared what that whole thing means or yeah. what it entails right yeah and i feel like that itch is like a it's like hitting the pause button on your current relationship you just want to you just want to hit the pause and kind of scratch the itch somewhere else. And, and I think that happens because, you know, w when you're in a relationship, let's just say seven years, because you said the seven year itch, mm -hmm. like there just comes a point in time where, you know, you, if you're not improving on yourself, you're, you're basically butting heads, right? Yeah. You're just butting heads constantly. And so, you know, naturally you think it, it used to be easier. You know, I used to feel all these things. I used to have blonde puppy love and, and didn't give a shit and would have sex in the woods right with a birthday party a mile you know a couple feet away i mean that, that's just impulsive yeah, shit. yeah that impulsive shit but you know you you do that with someone you've been with seven years you're like no the kids are right there blah 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 you come up with all these reasons not to be impulsive so you know i think it's natural to want to sort of revive that impulsiveness in some way right yep that that those feelings that that i've kind of fleeted um 
And you're kind of looking for that new cycle again, basically. Yeah. So let's talk about the cycle. Um, we have just like we do in nature, how we have uh, spring, summer, fall, winter, and how certain things happen during the spring and certain things happen during, you know, it's just part of life. It's the cycle. It's a circle. And just like the sun moves through the constellations, the zodiac, so does our patterns in our relationships. For example, Aries being the first in the zodiac kind of represents the newness in a relationship, those impulsive feelings, those optimistic feelings, those like new ideas that I want to follow that like, I'm just going to do this regardless that that real fire passion that an Aries has um, that leadership of I'm just going to do this. And I don't care what anybody says. That's the beginning of a relationship. And so I feel like because it's a cycle, we in a relationship, we're going to go through each sign pretty much like what what is it like the itch is it's the idea a new idea a new something uh, it's the possibility it's the beginning of a cycle and so we're going to go through each one to re- to show how they all influence our relationship and how the relationship is also based on these cycles so it doesn't mean that we can't come back around and hit aries again and have those newnesses and have but the right. problem is We don't realize that this is the cycle. So what happens is when we go through the summer, I mean, the spring of newness and freshness and blossoming of our, of our lives, right. Of our relationship, we get to that summer love, which is all just hot and like, okay, we, we still got that newness going, but we're, we're deeper into it. Dirty dancing too. Yeah. So (laughs) then hot Cuban night, you hit the fall season and that's the part where shit gets ugly. and what happens is we don't want to face it, right? Like you said, we don't want to let go like the leaves that fall off the trees. We don't want to let go of whatever it is that we need to let go within ourselves in order for this relationship to continue its cycle because the winter comes and in the winter time, there's, you know, death of the ego. There's a lot of going within. There's a lot of, hey, we need to separate so we can have our time to really process, to really figure out who it is we are. Are we being who we have grown up? to be like what our parents made us be what society made us be or is this really who we are and is this who I want to be with you so we have to internalize that and process that through the winter time of our relationship if we don't we can never really reach that Aries again of a new cycle because we're still stuck in the fall and in the winter we're still stuck in that part of that's why sometimes that seven-year itch comes and we're like We're really stuck in not letting go of our ways and we can never feel that newness again until we finish that cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I see what you're doing there. uh, That was good. Um, As far as the newness and it only happening once. So, so yeah, I mean, but when it happens again, it's, it's on a deeper level. Right. Right. I mean, so, you know, each time you go through this cycle that the depth of, of the love just becomes more it just becomes deeper and 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 i think it's hard to describe right like you can't i can't put it into words um it's much a puppy when you first get a puppy you're so excited but you have to deal with all the peeing and all the waking up at night but then as the puppy gets older and stops that you begin to have a a deeper bond with it and then it's like an older dog and you're like this is my dog you know we went through some shit together yeah for sure no i mean i think but i think i don't think that accurately describes like fully because I think you just have to experience it, but True. you know, when you get, when you go through that itch again, it, it's on a deeper level, but it's an itch to become, I, I guess, more united. I, I think that's the best way I can describe it for us. Right. Is like when we go through these cycles and we get through the, the winter and we go into Aries, into this itch phase, it's, it's like an itch in a, in a different part of your life. It's, it's to be together, but it's to magnify the relationship right? It's sort of an itch to magnify, to improve. Well, right? it's to kind of go up the, because if you think about <clears throat> the, 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 if you think about the wheel, right? The Zodiac wheel, it's really a 3d circular going up type of deal. Right? right. And so we could get stuck on this level going around and around, Yep. but it's, it's in, okay, I finished this cycle uh, successfully and now I'm able to go upward towards the next level and it's that just ever increasing awareness and love that you get the more you increase in levels right sort of yeah, you know, that was metaphorically good. i like that yeah 
<laughs> so let's talk about our own itch. Um, let's talk about the beginning, like of our relationship back in 1997. <laughs> wow. Let's take a let's take a, a second. You want to talk about it? 1997. Girls no, should always introduce the itch, and the I'll just itch. kind of fill in. Yeah. Um, I've already exposed my moon and Pisces too much. <laughs> okay, so the itch. Let's say that uh, I, without going too much into details, I was ready to move. I'm always, I've always been ready to move and get out of here. And it was 1997, and I got that itch of, you know what? The only way that I'm going to get out of here is if I find a job nearby. Again, I was 16, so I had to walk because I didn't have a car um, somewhere nearby that I can get some money so that I can leave and go to Miami so I can finish my high school there. And I went to the movie theater, got a job, and he was the manager there. And Sounds so weird. Right? And I it's illegal. immediately, <laughs> I immediately, it was one of those things where you know, you know, when you know, you know, um, and I just knew, and I, I immediately felt like the connection, but I was young. I still was dealing with, a uh, an ex. Um, there was just a lot going on. You were just, you were just finishing a relationship or you were still in it. No, you had no, just no, finished no. it. Yeah, you had finished a relationship. So we started talking like friends about, actually, he started telling me a lot about his relationship because you were hurt at the time. So you would like, tell me and you talk to me about it um and at that time you know it was like cool we're friends we're talking but i'm really starting to really like this guy and i need to step it up another notch so we we just really started flirting and that whole itch i had to move it's funny how these itches like itches to move cause some other ripple effect right right so the whole urge to move and then get diminished <laughs> you're still here <laughs> oh. uh -huh. um the whole urge to move led me towards him and it was this wow i don't care anymore about anything i don't want to go anywhere i can't live without him i'm just like blindly just blindly in love right that whole newness puppy love and it was amazing it was the first time i had experienced such like Things that you would get out of a out of a romantic novel that you never thought would be possible in your life, you know, you're like, oh, that's just some novel shit. It's not real. Um, but he started introducing me to that, and I'm like, wow, like this is this is a one in a million type thing. And I remember saying, like, I'm not leaving you. And I was like 16, and I'm like, I don't care what that comes with. Like, we're in this, and I was so sure when i said it that i think that that's what helped a lot of our sticking through our yeah for sure yeah because i mean you know i've told you this we there were many times in our relationship where i'm like yo i can't because it's hard it's a lot yeah. like if you if you know anything about you know the tf twin flame relationship i mean everything is just magnified everything is just magnified and we're we're very much the same but very much opposite um and you know she was so sure of that we were going to be together and we were just that's just what's going to happen and we were going to do this and we we're going to do that and we we're going to have a boy first and a girl second and and just describe the whole situation and i'm like it, it was overwhelming but like you know it, the passion in her eyes and just the there was no doubt and for me that i know when when things got rough and you know i wanted to quit or whatever you know i always went back to that right i always went back to how sure you were and i'm like no you know it just it helped me you know, get through things at times. Yeah. Cause at Your that sureness. time, you know, that whole blind part about it, like I'm in love, I'm totally in love. I'm blind. Mm -hmm. The blind part is really like, I'm blind to the shadow aspects of yourself, right? Like I'm blind about all those things that your representative did not tell me about. I'm blind to it, but the, right. the light that I see so far outweighs whatever it is that is going to come with it. Right. And that whatever it is that's going to come is is usually breaking down those conditioned parts of us that aren't necessarily us, right? Um, the, the conditioning, the programming, all of that stuff that has to do with like family. And yeah, we didn't know it was coming. It was, it was coming hardcore, <laughs> but 
you know, that'll be for next week. But um, this one, it's really like, is your relationship missing passion? Is your relationship missing optimism? Is your relationship um, missing that impulsive nature to like, hey, let's just go and take a ride and listen to music and for no reason at all because we just want to yeah, get away. It, like, where is that in your relationship? We talk about that for a second because yeah. like impulsiveness is, you know, when you've been with someone for a long period of time, I mean, you 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 get stuck, you, you get stuck's a bad word, but you're in routines, mm -hmm. right? You're, you just become a, a person and a couple of patterns, right? And so I know like for me and us, you know, sometimes as a guy, you do an impulsive thing and she's like, I oh, know, no, I don't want to, or, you know, comes up with all these excuses. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, for, for a guy like that, that that's a, like a gut punch, you know what I mean? Because um, we want, I mean, we want to experience that. We want you to be submissive and, and appreciative and accepting of the situation because we want you to be that way. Right. So I know like when that happens and, and, you know, you kind of get rejected, um, there, there's an, it's really easy to hold on that resentment. Right. And then, you know, that kind of resentment just branches out into other things, but which is important why we should ask why you don't want to do those things. Right. And so the, the point is, is, you know, if, if that happens, you know, don't take it personal, like just take a step back as a couple and, you know, talk about how impulsive you used to be, you know, how, how you used to do things, do this. And it doesn't have to be sexually related. It could be, you know, trips to wherever, you know, you dropped what you were doing, you, you had a picnic and, you know, there was no, nothing to celebrate. It just happened because, right. But those type of impulsive things, like when you're, when your partner does that, you know, try to be present and try to remember the you, that the you, when I say you, I mean, you as a couple, the you that once was yeah. right. And that, that impulsiveness is, I think, so important. Um, to give into that from time to time, because the uh, the older you get, and I think you can speak from experience in a relationship, like impulsiveness happens, uh, it still happens, but it it just dwindles. It's like a it's like a candle, right? Yeah, it becomes mundane. And, yeah, and you have to like, you have to you know light that candle, and impulsivity is is important in a relationship. To you know, that. that's interesting that you said light that candle, and that we have a candle here, and that Aries is a fire sign and a cardinal sign which is that impulsive first, you know, opening that door, that portal to the new Don't cycle. Don't give a shit. Right? And so it's kind of like that. Do you have that fire? Are you missing that fire in your relationship? Um, you know, not that we don't have other elements or other signs that have fire, um, which we'll get to, but this is more of that impulsive newness type of fire. So it's more about really taking a look at your relationship and where it is now and wondering, you know, am I missing these things? These are the beginning of a cycle. Um, is that there? And it could be that you're just on a whole nother, you know, placement in that cycle where you're not in Aries right now, but you can be. So we're going to be basically going over each one every single week. Um, and then once all the 12 weeks have gone by, you're able to really look at it and go, where am I on this cycle in my relationship? Do I need to let go of some things that will help catapult me towards that new level that's going to flourish in the spring? metaphorically in in new ways on an, you know in a whole nother level and this is why it's so important to kind of break it down into this this 360 degree circle or cycle into those 30 degrees you know let let's yeah. look at these 30 <clears throat> degrees of your relationship and see how they impact your life yeah and i think i mean that that's kind of the reason why you know we're talking about this because this is something that we've talked about all the time is that you know, had we known this, had, had, were, you know, were we taught this information or, or, or had this information been introduced to us when we were going through it, you know, how much would that have changed how we reacted to situations, how our sure. relationship unfolded? So, you know, the whole, the whole idea behind this is that, you know, take what resonates, hold on to it. You're going to be somewhere in this stage. And, you know, I really do think that, you know, if you're in love, if you love someone and you know, you know, you know, the answer to that question, that understanding that you're just in a phase, right? And you two just have to get on the same page. And when you get on the same page and understand where you are in that phase, you know, it gives you hope and it sort of gives you something to look forward to and the understanding and knowing that this too shall pass. It's just a matter of time, right? And you can also take on that same cycle that is 
portrayed throughout the year and look at it in, you know, just the four elements and four quadrants and the four, however you want to look at it. But it's basically like, do you have that fire within your relationship? Do you have that, you know, water, that emotional bond with within your relationship? Um, do you have that air, the mental conversations, the mental back and forthness? Are you on the same page mentally? And then of course, um, what did I miss? There's fire. That's the passion. Air, water, earth. Oh yeah, those are the three. What am I missing? Earth, earth, earth. Sorry, sorry. See, see how I always need your earth? Because uh, I'm always like, earth, what earth? Um, need my earth. Yeah, you're such what? a, because you're an earth. And so I need your earth. I'm so not grounded. Is it like a pickup line? No, I don't know. <laughs> um, I need your earth. I like that. <laughs> and you'd be like, I need your fire. But you really, uh, can't, you, you can't. Anyway, let's go back. So um, earth, you know, grounding in the relationship, solidity, some um, stability, all of that. So do you have those four? Then. Think about how you can implement it throughout your day. So, I mean, if you want to start something new, start in the beginning of the day of thinking, okay, what Aries aspect can I implement into today in my relationship? Um, so I think that this is super uh, fun to do when you start breaking it down like this. I think next week we're going to go into stubborn and toxic habits and toxic um, a lot of those relationships that'll, that be, that'll be fun get into yeah the and you know what's cool like what you said um i'm gonna just skip up so you have a little preview but gemini is the twins right and it's funny how when i was reading my diary i i said you know there's an aspect of that timing of the twins that i wrote the date it was actually gemini season and, you know, we're going to get really deep into that, but the characteristics were happening during Gemini season. And I didn't notice that until now. I didn't know what that meant back then, but looking back at it, it, it just makes more sense. And it takes away the feeling of I'm not good enough, where I made mistakes to understanding this is all part of that. Yeah. Cycle. The woulda, the woulda, shoulda, coulda thoughts. Right. Yeah. It's just clear understanding. So I hope that you tune in for this season so that you can kind of get a, uh, a glimpse of each aspect of the signs and how that portrays into your relationship. Um, and what else was I going to say? Don't know. Do you love me? Can't live without me? I love you. I can't live without you. <laughs> what was I saying? Um, but yeah, I think, oh, that's what I was going to say. If you guys are interested in relationship um, counseling, coaching, relationship talks, uh, we do have Relationship Tuesdays um, every Tuesday in the QE Academy. I'll put the link below. So tune into that if you are wanting more, um, what, one-on-one -on -one sort of, yeah. Um, information on guidance. that so guidance that's a good word um all right so that was the first one season two episode one the itch do you scratch it depends on the situation right <laughs> thank you for joining and we will see you guys next time peace, peace.